changer which is called the condenser, the basic function of the tank. From the compressor, the high temperature, high pressure gas flows through a discharge line into another heat exchanger which is called the condenser. The basic function of the condenser is to remove the superheat in order to lower the temperature of the high pressure gas to the condensing or saturation temperature. It then removes the latent heat of condensation so that the high pressure refrigerant gas condenses into a liquid. As the high pressure, high temperature refrigerant discharged gas enters the condenser, it is distributed uniformly over the tubes by a discharge inlet baffle. The condensing water flows through the tubes. As the refrigerant condenses over the tubes, droplets form, collecting at the bottom of the condenser. In the condenser, heat flows from the hot refrigerant gas to the cooler cooling water. The compressed vapor entering the condenser ranges in temperature from 100-160 degrees, and is warmer than the 85 degree cooling tower water flowing through the condenser tubes. The cooling water absorbs the heat from the refrigerant vapor which is around the outside of the tubes, and condenses it into a liquid. The temperature of this liquid ranges from 90 to 110 degrees. The ohm chiller utilizes liquid subcooling for better efficiency. The subcooler bundle is located in the bottom section of the condenser shell. As liquid refrigerant condenses in the main condenser, it is channeled to the subcooler inlet area, located at the return water box end of the condenser. Refrigerant liquid enters the subcooler section from the sides and bottom. It then flows axially down the shell length, over the subcooler tubes, and exits out the bottom at the condenser water inlet end. The refrigerant leaves the condenser as a high-pressure liquid and flows into the intercooler. The function of the intercooler is to reduce the temperature of the liquid refrigerant before entering the cooler. From the high-pressure chamber of the intercooler, the liquid refrigerant flows through the float valve into the intermediate pressure chamber. As the refrigerant flows through the float valve, the pressure is reduced. This causes the liquid refrigerant to cool itself to the temperature corresponding to the pressure in the intermediate chamber. By evaporating or flashing part of its weight, the refrigerant, at this point, is at a lower pressure and temperature than it was when it drained from the condenser. As the liquid refrigerant accumulates in the intermediate pressure chamber in the intercooler, the float in the intermediate chamber rises and opens a valve leading to the liquid line feeding refrigerant to the evaporator or cooler. The liquid refrigerant then completes the cycle by returning to the cooler ready to chill more water. The rising level of liquid refrigerant in the intercooler's high pressure chamber lifts a float ball opening a valve into the intermediate pressure chamber. As the pressure on the liquid is reduced, liquid expands through the opening into the intermediate pressure chamber and part of it boils cooling the remaining liquid. The liquid refrigerant that boils receives its latent heat of vaporization from the remaining liquid refrigerant, thus reducing the temperature of the liquid refrigerant. The refrigerant that boils in this process is known as flash gas. The flash gas is routed through baffle passages to a piping system which allows the flash gas to be drawn into the second stage of the compressor. The intermediate pressure area of the intercooler has an interstage liquid mist eliminator which prevents liquid or droplets of refrigerant from being carried over into the compressor. By removing some of the flash gas at the higher intermediate pressure, there is reduction in the amount of horsepower required to compress the flash gas. This results in improving the cycle efficiency. The cooled intermediate pressure liquid refrigerant accumulates in the vertical drop leg of the intercooler. As the liquid accumulates, a float ball rises and opens a valve to the liquid line, which is connected to the cooler inlet. Additional flashing of some of the refrigerant will occur as it passes into the low pressure side of the float, reducing the temperature of the refrigerant to the boiling temperature in the cooler. To summarize the refrigeration cycle, the heat moves from the load into the cooling water or secondary refrigerant. The cooling water flows through the cooler or evaporator, where it transfers the heat picked up in the load to the primary refrigerant. The refrigerant gives up that heat in the condenser. The condenser water then carries it to the cooling tower, where it is rejected to the outside atmosphere.